Hello learners, welcome to this course on Fundamentals and Programming of 8085 Microprocessor. In this tutorial, I will be discussing about Programmable Timer Controller IC number 8253 or 8254, how it can be interfaced with your 8085 Microprocessor. So first let us start with the fundamentals of your Programmable Timer Controller. So time is nothing but an interval created between two events. So this time can be created using counters available in this programmable timer controller. So we have three 16-bit registers or in short form we can call it as a counter which can perform timing and counting functions. So each counter has two input pins, a clock and a gate signal and one pin for out. So this counter will be initially loaded with a 16 bit value and it starts to decrement the count until it reaches 0. So when the count reaches 0, it will generate a pulse that can be used to interrupt the CPU. So we put a value into the counter and then start decrementing this value depending upon the clock signal given to it. So the frequency of clock determines the speed of down counting and the gate signal will be used as an enable signal. So whenever the gate signal is there, the down counting will be performed. So if the gate signal is not available, then in that case, the down counting will not get initiated. So we put the value into the counter register, then depending upon the clock and gate signal, the down counting will start. Once the count reaches to zero, the module will generate an interrupt, then we can perform certain actions. So for example, let us take an LED. I want to switch on and off the LED after every one second. So in that case, first I can put or I can switch on the LED then I can initiate a timer. I can put a value such a way that the down counting when the count reaches a zero, we try to have a one second delay. So once I start the counter, it keeps on decrementing. When the count reaches a zero, a trigger signal will be initiated to the CPU. Then what the CPU can do is it can change the logic of your LED. So thereby toggling of an LED can happen with the help of a timer or counter. So here the counter can handle up to 10 megahertz clock frequency and these three counters can be programmed either in a binary or BCD count format. So we have two versions of the IC, one is 8253 and 8254. So the operating frequency differs for this ICs. For 8253 the operating frequency is from 0 to 2.6 megahertz Whereas for 8254, it is up to 10 megahertz. So both uses NMOS technology, whereas in 8254, it's a high density NMOS technology. And in 8253, we don't have a readback command. So readback command in the sense, we can't uh, read the count value, what is the current mode of the counter, what is the current status of the counter. So such things cannot be read back. Whereas in 8254, readback command is available, which means I can read the count value, programmed mode, current mode and the current status of the counter can be read. In 8253, reads and writes of the same counter cannot be interviewed. Whereas here, I can change from a read to write operation of the same counter. So this is the architecture of your programmable timer controller 8253. It contains three counters, counter 0, counter 1, counter 2 and each counter is given with two inputs, clock, gate and one output signal. So if these counters are connected through the internal bus to the data bus buffer, so this data bus buffer gets connected to your microprocessor. So from microprocessor, a value can be loaded onto this counters. 
So after loading the value onto this counters, depending upon the clock frequency and gate signal, the count value will get decremented. Upon reaching zero, the output signal can be generated and it can be used as an interrupt signal to the CPU. So the data from your microprocessor can also be used to put a word onto the control word register. So this is mainly used for configuring your counters. So we can operate these counters in six different modes and like that we can do the configuration in which mode a particular counter is going to operate. So such things can be done with the help of this control word register. Then there is also a read write logic for reading a data from a counter, for writing a data into the counters or writing a data onto the control word registers, we assert the signals, read and write signals. And A0 and A1 are the address lines connected from your 8085 microprocessor. So depending upon the value of this A0 and A1, a particular counter or control word register will be selected. So for example, if A0 and A1 is 00, counter 0 will be selected. 0, 01 counter 1 will be selected, 10 means counter 2 will be selected, 11 means control word register will be selected. Then depending upon the read or write signal, a information can be written onto this counter or control word register or it can be read from the counter or control word register. So there is also a chip select line to enable this 8253 IC. So if I see the pin details of this 8253 or 8254, it's a 24 pin dual inline package IC. So here you can see pin number 128 as the D0 to D7 lines, which will be connected to the D0 to D7 lines of your 8085 microprocessor. And pin number 9, 10, 11 relates to counter 0. So clock 0, gate 0 or inputs, out 0 is a output from the counter. Same way, pin number 12 is ground, pin number 24 is VCC. Then I have pin number 13 to 15 relates to your counter 1 and pin number 16 to 18 relates to your counter 2. Then pin number 19 and 20 is used for the selection of counter or control word register. Then there is a chip select line, then there are read and write signals in pin number 22 and 23. So if I look into the select lines rd bar wr bar and cs bar so if i put a 0 0 and a write operation then we are going to write the value into counter 0 so 0 0 represents selecting counter 0 so write operation means we are going to write a data onto counter 0 same way 0 1 means it's a counter 1 and again write operation in the sense we are going to write a data onto counter 1 same way we can perform write counter 2, we can also write control word, read counter 0, read counter 1, read counter 2, we can't read a control word. That operation is not possible yet. So whenever a data is loaded into a counter, so the value goes into a background counter. So the background counter is internal. It cannot be accessed directly by the programmer. So the programmer can load or the microprocessor can load a data only onto the counter. From counter it goes into the background counter and background counter is the one which is going to get decremented. So depending upon the clock signal and gate signal. So once the background counter goes to zero and output signal will be generated. So the control word register, it's an 8 bit register. So here the bits 7 and 6 represents selecting a counter or the operation on a counter. So 0, 0 represents counter 0 is selected, 0, 1 means counter 1, 1, 0 means counter 2, 1, 1 means read the read back status. We can read the status of the counter. Then RW1 and RW0 represents whether we are going to read the data and how the data is read or written into the counters. So for example, 00, 0 means read on the fly for read operation. So while counting takes place, the data can be read from the counter. Whereas 0, 01, we can read or write the lower byte. It's a 16-bit 
registers, counters are 16 bit registers, so we can read or write the lower byte. 10 means read or write the upper byte. 11 means read or write lower byte followed by the upper byte. Then the next three bits M2, M1, M0 represents the mode. We have six modes, mode 0, mode 1, mode 2, mode 3, mode 4, mode 5. So depending upon the value set in this M2, M1, M0, a particular mode is selected. So I will discuss about this mode in the coming slide. So first let us start with mode 0. So mode 0 is interrupt on terminal count. It is mainly used to generate an interrupt to the microprocessor after a certain interval. So let us take, so this upper part represents the outline, the lower part is a gate signal. So let us assume the gate signal is 1 and we are going to configure the timer 2 in mode 0 operation. So when a value is loaded onto this timer 2, for example let us take 3412 is a value which we are going to load it onto timer 2. So when a value is loaded, whatever might be the default state of the out signal, either it can be a low or high. When a value is loaded, the out signal goes to low. When the value, when the out signal goes to low, at that time the gate signal is also activated, it is in 1. So thereby down counting starts. So the down counting starts and it depends upon the clock frequency given to the timer 2. When the count reaches 0, the out signal goes to high. So thereby this rising edge can be used for triggering your microprocessor or it can be used as a interrupt signal to your microprocessor. So here we start with gate signal 1. So initially whatever might be the output out signal, it can be a high or low by default. So whenever we load a value onto this timer 2 or counter 2, it gets to logic low, out signal goes to logic low. Since the gate signal is 1, the down counting starts. When the down counting reaches to 0, the out signal goes from low to high and this low to high transition can be used as an interrupt signal. There is second case in this mode 0. So let us assume that again default out signal it can be high or low when a value is loaded onto the timer then the out signal goes to low. So at that time let us assume the gate signal is 1. So down counting starts. Before the value reaches 0 my gate signal goes to low. From 1 to 0 it goes. So what happens the counting stops there and that intermediate value will be saved. So again when the gate signal goes to high, the down counting will start from where it has stopped earlier. So again when the count reaches to 0, it will generate a low to high pulse in the out signal and it can be used as an interrupt signal. So this is the effect of gate signal during the process of down counting. Second mode which is mode 1 is a programmable one shot mode. It can be used as a mono stable multi vibrator. It generates an output low pulse. So let us take again. Initially let us assume the out signal it can be high or low. When a value is loaded onto the timer the out signal goes to high. So let us assume that when the, value, when the out signal goes to high the gate signal is zero. Which means the down counting will not stop. Down counting will get initiated only when I have a gate signal 1. So the value is retained. So when the value is retained, let us assume that the gate signal goes to high, from low to high. Then the down counting starts. When the down counting is being performed, if I change the logic of gate also to 0, it will not stop the counting. So the down counting will continue and until it reaches a terminal count. Count value is 0. When the count value gets 0, a low to high transition will take place in the out signal and it can be used to generate the trigger signal or interrupt signal. Same way in this mode 1, let us take again my initial state of out signal can be high or low. When a value is loaded, the out signal goes to high. Since the gate signal is 0 at that time, 
the down counting will not start. So when I have a valid gate signal, the down counting starts. So when the down counting starts, it keeps on decrementing. Let us assume that before it reaches a terminal count, another gate pulse comes. In that case, the initial value is reloaded again. Okay, initially the value is 3412. So this 3412 is reloaded again and again the down counting starts. So the total time period during which the time operation is created is initially 1000 clock pulses, then 3412 clock pulses. So which means total time period is around 4412 clock pulses. Once the count goes to zero, what happens? The out signal will go from low to high transition. This mode is called as a mode 1, which is programmable one shot mode. Third mode is a mode 2, which is called as a rate generator. So the output is normally high after initialization. Okay, after loading a data onto the counter, the out signal will be high. When the gate signal is 1, the down counting starts. When the down counting reaches 0, then a low pulse will be generated for one clock cycle. For one clock cycle, a low pulse will be generated on the out signal and the value is also reloaded. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is again reloaded. Since the gate pulse is again 1, it starts down counting. So when we have a low value of gate signal, then once the terminal count is reached, an output pulse will be generated and there will not be any reload operation. So reload will take place only when I have the gate signal to be 1. And another case of mode 2 is, again let us take whatever might be the initial value of out. When I load a value onto this timer, it gets high. Out signal goes to high. So at this time the gate signal is 0, so down counting will not take place. Whenever a gate signal has a valid input, then automatically down counting starts. When the count value reaches to 0, a clock pulse of or one clock pulse duration, low signal will be generated and the value will also be reloaded to the timer or counter register. Then the next mode is your mode 3 square wave generator. So it is similar to mode 2 except that output remains low for half of the time period and I for other half of the period. So for example, when I have, when I load a value onto the timer, when the, when I have a valid gate signal, for half of the time period, I will have out signal to be high. For the remaining half of the period, we will have out signal to be low. So for example, 4264 is the value loaded. For 2132 clock pulses, my output signal will be high. And for the another 2132 clock pulses, the output signal will be low. So when the count reaches a terminal count, the value will be reloaded and this process will get continued. When the gate signal goes to zero, then once a terminal count is reached, no reload operation will be performed. So reloading will not be performed. Another case, again, when I put a value onto this timer 2, when I have a non-activated gate signal, the down counting will not start. As soon as the valid gate signal is there, then the down counting starts. Then again for half of the time period, out signal will be high and for the remaining half, the out signal will be low. Once on reaching the terminal count, a reload operation will take place. Mode 4 is a software triggered mode. So in this mode, output will remain high until the timer has counted to 0 at which point the output will pulse low and then go high again. So for example here, whatever might be the default value of out signal, when I load a value onto the timer, the out signal will go to high. When I have a valid gate signal at that time, it starts down counting. Once the count reaches to zero, the output signal goes to a low pulse for one clock period. Even though I have a valid gate signal at this time, no reloading will take place. 
so we can use this one for generating a single pulse a single pulse after certain time duration we can generate it using this software triggered mode and the final mode sixth mode which is your mode 5 hardware triggered mode this mode generates a stroke in response to an externally generated event so for example when i load a value into the timer the out signal goes to high so at that time let us assume the gate signal is zero which means down counting will not get performed as soon as i have a valid gate signal the down counting will start then after the down counting starts even though my gate signal goes to low still the down counting will get performed upon reaching the terminal count a out signal goes to low for one clock pulse and no reload operation will be performed so this also can be used for generating a trigger signal after certain time period so these are the six different modes supported by your programmable timer controller so in this tutorial i have discussed about on how to interface a programmable timer controller ic8253 or 8255 with your 8085 microprocessor thanks for watching please subscribe for more technical learning thank you